Hello and welcome to the Plown Newsroom, episode 17, recorded Thursday, September 14, 2023. You're listening to Fred van Dijk from Rotterdam. And Philip Bauer from Munich. Hi, Philip. Hi, Fred. It's been a while since we saw each other. Um, yeah, you could say that. Oh, well, we we chatted on, uh, on on online and we sent some messages and other things, but we've been busy. Yeah. For we, our podcast. So the last episode was in April, I think. Uh, yeah. Something like that. And since then, a lot of stuff happened. So we're going to cover news from the Plone community, uh, which is rela- releases, uh, stuff from teams and from sprints, event uh, out, uh, report outs. Uh, then we'll discuss uh, upcoming events. The big one, obviously, being the Plone conference in, uh, sep- uh, in October. And uh, last but not least, we're going to have some add-ons uh, for you that we're going to show and tell. Yeah. So this is a podcast about what's new in the world of Plone, an open source CMS written in Python and also in JavaScript nowadays a lot by a great and friendly community all uh, over the world. The podcast is available in video and audio only. If you listen to the audio version, we'll also now probably do some small screen shares on the on the add-ons, uh, but we'll try to d- describe what we're what we're showing there. You should be fine with audio only as well. Yeah. It's, it's news. We try to provide some news after all. Um, we have an overview of our recordings on plone.org slash newsroom, where you can find links to relevant websites and also the add-ons and the things we discuss. So... That out of the way. Let's catch up, Philip. Yeah. Where have where have we been? Where have we been? So um, maybe we I'll start. I've been I've been on vacation. No, uh, first of all, I've been working, and then there was some work, uh, some work, and maybe some more work. Uh, so until August, everything was pretty crazy, and we had uh, to finish a lot of projects and uh, write tenders and stuff. But then I was actually on a four-week vacation in um, the Britannia in France. <laughs> Where did I go again? You you sent me a message when I asked something about slurping oysters on uh, on uh, in in, uh, in in on the seaside in town. One, yeah, uh, Brittany is beautiful, and I haven't touched my computer in these four weeks plus one week when I was came actually came back had to deal with. Uh, um, construction in my house my office this is not my new office as you yeah see, I, would, I think yeah I, we, i was planning to do the next episode in the new office but it's it's not finished yet and there was a hole and water and you know what happens with water and walls and stuff and it's a whole it's a huge nightmare but the next episode um I'm, certainly i'm surprised the house is still standing yeah it's all, it's all, it's all good <laughs> no it was it's a decent house i've, I've been there uh, there once you know that's fine but you you told me like oh i'm going to move to the new office and almost yeah. there and then life happens i think and that's a, i think that's a common theme for us in general also if i look at other people in the plone community this year uh we've had two or three very interesting years to put it like that and now it should this year should have been like not not business as usual or life as usual, but it, there's so much going on for me as well. I, I announced that uh, I uh, in the last episode on, in April uh, we recorded uh, in a normal setting. Uh, I was now working part time for both Zest and and Git Concept this year, and I must say it's been very interesting to to work for uh, two integrators part time and then being able to to uh, uh, to talk with more uh, uh, with more colleagues, uh, have different projects. Uh, Practicing my German again, but we we I already I, practiced I my German with you. My English in in Brittany, I only spoke. Fr- my French is now good. We can could do this recording in French. No, oh, it's, no that's not, a no. joke. My French is not, still not terrible, but I practice it, and my English is gone yes. basically. Yes, but but like like you uh, switching to. So I have this interesting phenomenon now that when I have two two meetings in German, then my next meeting, I start putting in German words instead of English words, or at the dinner table when I talk about then then suddenly a German. Word Word pops up first. So really confusing, uh, but how, fun. How challenging is it to work for two companies at the same time? Probably you're time boxing things. I, I'm trying to time box things, but you can't plan everything. And there's this huge, oh, shiny effect that you have whenever you see something new or something different. And that's if, if, if I mean, you get enthusiastic, uh, uh, you get enthusiastic about this, and you want to help, and you know things. And I must say, it's it's been a blessing that you can. You can bring experience to to both sides. I mean, I, I've always liked this. Uh, uh, I mean, I could have gone to a, uh, I could also have worked at a university or a large large institution and and build build 
websites they are using Plown or another technology. And then if the organization is large enough, you still have a lot of different sites. But uh, very, for me, at least for me personally, then you, you get, I would say entrenched, but you get locked into the organization and it's usually only this organization, organization's uh, uh, issues and challenges. And when like you and me, we're working as an for, uh, in or we have an integrator company where we provide multiple clients from multiple areas with, in, uh, with, with support, I have so often had, oh, but we've had this problem before, not in your area, but this kind yeah, of organization. Exactly. There you splone, and then they had this. Maybe that's also something for you. And maybe it's not even even an advice on, on a specific part of the, of the website, but also a process behind it or something else that an, yeah. or, another organization has already solved. And I'm only getting more goodness now by having yeah, two integrator <laughs> working great, for two. But the, there is a, the downside to it is context switching, and not everyone is made for that. I'm... I'm okay, uh, but I know people who have a really hard time doing uh, three different things on one day. Not at the same time, but just not having a decent uh, time slot of, I don't know, five or six hours for one. We, we did not prepare thing. this. So I'm, I'm still in, in doubt on, on having a plone talk exactly on this part, how to keep your sanity as a, as a developer and the project manager. Because indeed, it was, it's the context switching that... that we all know is bad because we we say or the context switching not but switching too much in a day is is not good for your productivity or for your personal well-being but what i found out is even if you can handle the context switching it's it's not just switching it's also the the kind of work you're you're doing so maybe to spoil my uh, my presentation and i don't need to do an extra presentation on on, <laughs> on plone conf yeah, but what i've been effective. what i've been thinking here is if I do project management work, I'm in a mode of looking in front of me, behind of me, assessing risks, having the black hat, having the yellow hat, and, and, and seeing... That's all good and fine and well, but if you need to do some development thing and you need to dive into this block or this style or this feature and you need to focus on it for for two or three hours to get stuff done to get to to, to explain to a computer like this is what i mean and this is what you should do preferably in a deterministic way then it's very bad if your brain at the same time is like oh but what will happen tomorrow if i implement this will this still work in two weeks or what in yeah. in, in two months do we still have the budget should i maybe ask a colleague and it's so it's not only the context switch but it's the it's the the, the 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 holistic view versus the focusing on the detail thing to get it done and that's tripping me up more in the context switch than just having the context switch alone so i'd say it, do, it do separate separate project management work from from development work if you do both at least not at the same block in the day for, for me it's not possible to too many clients where I have the the head of the project manager and develop and at least one of the developers at the same time. So that's I I, I struggle with that constantly. But it's probably a topic for a different uh, discussion. Maybe over a beer first before we do maybe an maybe I should I, maybe I should send in that uh, that talk uh, to to blog off this year. You I, you, maybe you convince me. So <laughs> uh, yeah, but life yeah, it's work work work. Uh, I also play. I had a short vacation. Uh, uh, I didn't. We didn't go to Brittany, but I went to uh, uh, Austria, Zillertal, for a, a short week of a, a nice well a nice wellness hotel. Uh, we weren't so lucky with the weather, but we were still able to have two nice uh, long walks uh, uh, on on top of the mountains. I had a story. We went up on t on Tuesday, and they already predicted bad weather. We came up, we took a coffee, and the rain was pouring down so much that I, I looked at my partner and it's like, okay, we're, we're we're grown adults. We're not going to let ourselves rain. We're going. So we just we took the cable down again. We went to two towns uh, to play the tourist, and we came back the next day, and then the weather was better. It was like, no, we're not going to do this. We're too old for this. Yes, <laughs> to stretch around smart in the weather move with all the extreme weather events at the moment. To not, yeah, uh, but it was a very beautiful vacation uh, uh, on the short side, and we'll have an I uh, have a, uh, a longer vacation the week before a Plonkonf, so we oh, will already good. be going there. Yeah, let's talk about Plonkonf in, yeah. in a second. We uh, will. Generally speaking, um, we were trying to go, go I don't know, uh, find out the mood in the company uh, in in the community, and uh, what we think happens because. The visibility is a bit lower at the moment. Things is that everyone is crazy busy with projects 
And at the same time, PlonConf is approaching very fast because it's uh, it's very early in the year. Uh, it's relatively um, early. We used to have it uh, uh, at the end of October or, yeah, or no, even beginning early. of November. Was a bit late last year, uh, but now we're we're yeah we're in, in uh, uh, at the beginning of October. So people come back from holiday or uh, vacation maybe in uh, end of August, first of September. They have to catch up with work again and. One month to PlonConf. Yeah, and they, they need to prepare talks and finish projects, start new projects, acquire new projects, all this all that at the same time. So that's why everyone is busy, 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 busy. And we're going to talk about some things that came out of that. So well, let's start with the news. Uh, we'll get a couple of releases since April. Um, what happened? What's about uh, the Plon 6 uh, classic uh, state? We had 606, and now we actually are at 607. Yes, uh, so a, a little a little birdie, or let's say my colleague Maurits, who is the release manager, uh, is working on the 607 t this week. He, uh, I can't get the contents because he is probably working on it right now. Uh, so we, we, we or we delay the the recording to this evening, but he will probably have the like he usually does uh, have a RC uh, a candidate out uh, today with info on communityplan.org for people to to test it. And then the uh, the final release will be made somewhere next week. So that's Plone 607. And uh, in combination with that, we'll, uh, what the release managers both do is that they look at what uh, what's uh, available on the Volto uh, part, uh, because Volto has a kind of independent release schedule, but still the Volto 6, uh, 16 series gets uh, small updates and fixes uh, uh, and had had a multiple. Uh, so that one will also be bundled then uh, next week, but the final release there will be... Um, out from the top of my head, we're now at 16.23, I think, or 16.24 with Volto. So there will be a 16.24, 25, or 26 bundled next week. But then again, if you use Volto as a front end, you can, you can still have those small minor upgrades and, uh, at any time uh, uh, you want yourself. Yeah, regarding Volto, I, I, do you have any information about features that made it into Plone 606 or 607 that are <laughs> noteworthy? Not yet. No, that's I'm, so I'm I'm helping. Okay. I'm, so that's that's my uh, uh, small part for me in the marketing team where I look at Marit's uh, uh, release notes, the full release notes, make a condensed version. But I always do this based on on what Marit uh, reports. And Marit has its scripts again that go through every package that has been changed uh, uh, in the release and makes out a full summary. And everybody can see those changes. If you want, you can see the the last commit almost commit message from any package with the changes between. Uh, 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 Plone 605 or 606 or now 626 to 607 release. Yeah. So it's all there, but of course what we try to do is summarize and, uh, and and give the highlights. But the highlights are in progress as we speak. Yeah, okay. I, I just know in 606 there is an update uh, to the latest Bootstrap 5.3 release. And other than that, it's basically... Oh, sorry, you meant, the, of course, what we've missed. So, yeah, yeah you're we, right. We, we, we had that one. <laughs> we, so, we, we kind of uh, uh, went uh, silent after 6.03. So, that's, it's 6.03, uh, between 6.03 and 6.06. We could do this, yeah, we could do the summary there. Um, indeed, Bootstrap had a... That's the, 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 the biggest change, maybe. Um, so, Bootstrap uh, got a small update... Uh, in version number from 5.2 to 5.3, where Bootstrap 5.3 now has support for uh, kind of color classes in, in themes, and this enables uh, 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 dark and light mode. So if you if you don't do anything and you didn't customize your theme, then the minor updates are fine, but Maritz put in a special note in there that if you do have a customized theme and you want to look into that, you need to change or add two or three lines of include uh, files in your main uh, 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 theme as CSS. If you copied and, and used the same procedure uh, of, of, of building the theme as is in the uh, Plone theme uh, 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 Barcelonetta uh, 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 default theme. Yep. We use SAS there to compile everything. We have a, a lo long list of, in, of, of includes of Bootstrap and other things there, and if you would like to use the the Bootstrap 5.3 features, you need to add three extra lines in your. Uh... And then, of course, you don't have dark mode support yet because for dark mode support, you also need a small widget somewhere on the on the page that allows you to switch the color theme, and that's something that we will activate for Plone 6.1 final. Nice. Yeah, there is a um, there are a couple of bug fixes in other releases uh, four four and five. Uh, one thing that I wanted to um, note is 
that we had an issue with an index uh, that's the sortable title index and it had a feature uh, like from way back where the, it, the content in that index is actually truncated. So if you had a title that is very long, uh, for example, um, journal for contemporary history of medieval, no, contemporary medieval doesn't work, contemporary history of Eastern Europe, um, issue mm -hmm. 25, then after a couple of strings, issue 25 is not going to be in that index. So your sorting will break if you sort on uh, on the sortable title, uh -huh. um, which is stupid. And finally, it has been fixed uh, after uh, a funny discussion on GitHub. Um, that's just one thing. It, it, it hit me at some point, so I had to uh, override it and but I was uh, again too lazy to fix that it was a couple of years back and now it's uh, <laughs> and, uh, now in, you get that 605 <laughs> which is good uh, but it's it's something that you don't expect that the sortable title index is truncated so stuff happens uh, nice bug fixes that actually improve your site or your user experience in these cases but we, we had a lot of other releases uh, especially uh, in in Volto uh, yes, like like I said, Volto has an independent schedule. Before you switch to Volto, let me very quickly. Okay. We also had a Plone five two thirteen release, which is really? not exciting at all. Uh, it's it's. I think it's the the, the 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 sub. The, so the the not the, the last, but now I lost the word for the almost last uh, 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 version. Uh, uh, before we have a final version, probably uh, um, also uh, uh, in one or two months, which will be the final version of Plone five two, and then it will really sunset. Uh, then we'll only have really uh, important bug fixes, I think, uh, left. Yeah, we're not going to delete five two because it's the the gateway version where you can run Python two and Python three with the same code base, basically, um, not the same database. Um, but yeah, so we'll, yeah, we'll that, also nothing nothing exciting happening. Nothing exciting there. Don't yes. don't expect that. So I do you, want if to. If you're still running five two, um, you you're not getting anything new. Yeah. So the, the the whole problem, and I want, do want to stress it. I, I see regular, uh, not regularly, but I've seen some messages again and again on community with people having an issue with Plone five two, and then they're running it with Python three ten. Yeah, that doesn't work. No, that it doesn't. Well, it 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 sort of works, but we never tested it, and it's not guaranteed. And there's no uh, continuous integration testing or whatever on it. Uh, the 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 the, the last tested version is Python three eight, and that's also where part of the problem is with sunsetting five two eventually because Python three eight will go out of support sometime. Yeah, you, that's next that's, year. That's like in in a migration pro a project, it's not a problem. Locally, you can I, I install Python two on Plone three something whatever, and get out the data. And yeah. as long as you don't run that in production. Um, yeah, but if you don't want to debug, it, it is it's around, it's installable. Yes. But if you don't want to debug very strange issues that nobody else has found out about with Plone five two, please stick to Python three eight. Yeah. It's still supported. There's Python three eight sixteen, I think, or seventeen now out. Yeah. So just just stick to that version. It's not that difficult to keep uh, your systems using that. So that was Plone five two, and you're now going to surprise us with features in Plone's in yeah. Volto sixteen, I suppose. Uh, obviously, uh, stuff is not happening in Volto sixteen as well. It's mostly bug fixes and some uh, backports, N not boring ones, actually interesting ones as well. But mostly development happens in Volto seventeen. And since the last episode of the Plone newsroom, uh, there were actually twenty. Not joking. Twenty alpha releases of Volto seventeen. We started with alpha six in April uh, for the last uh, episode, and now we're at alpha twenty six. Um, I'm not going through the whole change log. I'm picking four items. Uh, one is uh, the grid block uh, is now in core, so it's not you don't no longer have to use the add-on. Uh, I think it was kit concept grid block something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, this is now in core. Uh, the grid block works fine, and there is no no longer these weird variants like image grid and what was the other one, uh, video grid or something like that. Uh, there's just grid now, which is much nicer. Uh, then a lot of uh, components were refactored from class components to functional components. That is actually the work of a Google Summer of Code project. At least mm -hmm. one, maybe I think actually two projects. Uh, it's 
it's basically grunt work. It's not a huge improvement in, in, in functionality, but it is best practice to have functional components. They're nicer to read and uh, it's, they follow the documentation. So if you read the documentation, say this is how you write a component, and then you see these old class-based components in uh, Volto 7, uh, 16, uh, you're, oh, this is uh, kind of old stuff. But now they're, they're, a lot of them are being updated. Uh, there's a new view uh, that's actually a feature that you can click on. Uh, there's a view, uh, add links to uh, item. Um, links to item view it's in the in the, the three dots you can see how, how many uh, items reference the item that you're looking at it uses the relation catalog and the relation endpoint that has been written uh, for the relation control panel that we mentioned last time actually uh, and a big thing uh, that you don't really see uh, but when you develop you actually realize that it's there there's a new image component uh, that uh, has optimized image uh, scales that are taken from the catalog, if you use it right, uh, that is very effective in rendering uh, images in an optimized way. Um, if you have a lot of overwritten components, that is a bit of work to update these to use the new image uh, component from Volto, plus uh, tons of bug fixes. So this, this is what happened in Volto, and Volto 17 is approaching quickly. Um, I'm, I missed the last team meeting, but I'm optimistic that uh, we're gonna see um, a beta, at least a beta, maybe a final release before the conference. Um, I'm not trying to poke Victor, maybe he's he has other plans, but it feels very ready to me. Maybe there, there's still a couple of things that need to be finished, but it's, uh, it is certainly production ready. We're using it in a couple of projects and it's really, really nice. Yeah, you were explaining. I, I, I could. I was, I was on the brink of saying, "Hold my beer!" When you were explaining about functional components, if we have enough time, I can give you a small war story about that from the beginning of this week. Like uh, uh, a developer who soaks up a lot of, who soaked up a lot of React knowledge in the last four years, but didn't actually use it in practice. Now tries to add, a, add something to a functional component, and it took me most of this Monday to figure it out. But maybe for later. Um, and but yeah, you're right. A lot of development unfolded, but that was of course uh, uh, to be expected when we met each other in May at the beta of a sprint, uh, yeah. uh, where um, many of these things were uh, were either started or continued to work or, or were maybe closed already. And a lot of planning there. Uh, yeah, we, we decided what needs to be in 17 and where we should put the manpower. Yeah, that was also there. So we'll go that in a, in, a, in a short while. Um, yeah, so lots of exciting things and, and shameless uh, personal effort promotion. Uh, uh, I also, if, if you want to look it up, I added a bit of information on those faulting, uh, Photo 17 alphas at the end of the release notes of Plan 605 because I was like, okay, if we're going to have a li nice news item uh, 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 as a summary, I, maybe I can sneak in a little bit of more info. So I try with each each patch release on Plone.org, I try to, to put a little, and there's a little bit of information on how those 17 alphas work, how you can test them or, or use them uh, uh, on, uh, 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 I sneak them in at the end of, of the release items. Nice. So, um, talking about uh, planning uh, uh, and uh, indeed a photo team uh, uh, that has regular meetings every two weeks uh, uh, on Discord, uh, voice channel, on Tuesday mornings from, and I'm old because I have my team meeting in front, so it's always from 11 to 12. And we had, uh, we had one this Tuesday, you missed it. I was there uh, for 20 minutes and I had to have some other urgent things. What we hadn't had or what we, we did have, but not officially for a very long time in the community was a counterpart to the photo team for the classic UI uh, interface. And uh, the community uh, and uh, active people around classic UI have been trying to start this up. And we've had a few startup meetings uh, uh, for a classic UI team this summer, which wasn't really the ideal uh, uh, time frame to start the team, I noticed, uh, which was myself to blame because I asked people and I didn't get around to it in April, May. So I, I did the first real announcement at June and then surprise people were of course on vacation and then other people were on vacation. But we've had three, uh, 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 I must say, productive meetings. It's, it's first, it's all, of course inventorizing and it's a bit of the, the, the complement to the Volto team to also have a, a kind of a more semi-official uh, 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 meetup regularly to discuss with those interested 
what do we want to work on on Classic UI? Or did you find any major big bugs or things? You've, did you uh, create a nice add-on that you want to know, let other people know? And of course, what do we want to work on for the next Volto, uh, for the next Volto and Plone uh, uh, release uh, bundled? But Classic UI is still in there, of course. Also in 6.1, we'll have, uh, we'll have a Classic UI frontend. So that's going yeah, on. Plenty uh, of Classic UI projects around. Lots of companies are working on that. We have our biggest projects are still Classic UI projects. And they're not like old legacy stuff. They are, some of them are brand new. It, it all depends on the client. It depends on where the website used for. Uh, I've been working yes. now on, on and you as well on both a photo project and classic UI uh, projects, and, and both have their purpose and their uh, and their place. I think for the time being. Uh, uh, so it would be yeah, it would be a waste. If, it would be a shame if we would uh, uh, kind of lose all the. Uh, all the information or at least the visibility of classic UI uh, compared to Volto, where on the other side, I must say, for most modern projects where I now start with where, where a site can do a redesign, can have a re-implementation, and you look at the requirements that communication agencies and the organizations themselves ask of what they they want to present and what they want to do on a on a website, then it's very quickly going to the to the to, to the Volto blocks layout system where you can have much more interactive and, and much more uh, uh, changes and, and editability in the page itself because you you are basically programming in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a single page web application instead of HTML. But then again, if you are that experienced with right. HTML, you can, you can do it the other way around as well. Yeah, we just uh, evaluated a project um, where we realized that Yes, we would love to use Volto, but actually we're not going to use any blocks. We're not going to use the uh, the Pastanaga editor. We're not going to use anything that makes Volto Volto. So uh, yep. there is no reason to use Volto because we would have to rewrite all the um, all the user interface um, by hand uh, f for that project alone. So that made no sense in that case. Uh, that's why we're using Classic for that. But yeah, it's always uh, it's a, it's a, it's our sometimes a hard decision, sometimes an easy decision. But um, the 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 toughest thing is to get a all the back back background information that you need to make an informed decision. Uh, a about the uh, Plone and Classic and Volto, and B the requirements from the clients because uh, when they say yeah, it needs to be shiny and new, that is not really enough to go on. No, it certainly isn't. And there's uh, another example I can make is simply budget constraints. We've helped uh, an organization uh, uh, that uh, had a problem with, with their support where a, a developer uh, uh, got ill and they, they, they need some. So we, we they had a Plone 5.1 site, Classic UI. We very quickly migrated it to the latest supported 5.2. Uh, but then it turned out it was also a small effort to move them to Plone 6 Classic UI. And of course you could say, look, but if with Volto, you've got at least these, these hundreds of possibilities, but the organization itself was in, in flux at the moment. They are uh, publishing an open source uh, HR uh, framework uh, uh, every one or two years. They're in the process of do doing that. So for them at this time was like, okay, all the information is there. If we move to Classic UI, we've got, we get the latest goodness of, of, of iterative uh, changes um, and then we can we can we can do our our, our normal main uh, main purpose next year and then we'll see later if uh, what's there because of course when you have a plone 6 classic ui site with the tools that are now there uh, <laughs> and you have played a part in that but uh, others as well it's it's not that complicated to move a a, 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 a plone classic ui site where you stick you stick to the plone core uh, for most of it um, to move that to Volto, uh, no, uh, no. As a, no, that's that's not really the effort. The effort is is in all the customizations that have been done and the customizations that a customer still wants in the new uh, wants to move over to the new site with a different interface. So th let's hope that the Classic UI team helps uh, a uh, keeping Classic UI uh, churning along and b keeping it up to date. And maybe also uh, the people from the team giving talks and presentations at the conference. So far, I'm not very optimistic that this is going to be a huge topic. Uh, obviously, t people are giving talks on shiny new stuff. But let's talk about conference later. W yeah. What else do we have for news? There's some foundation news. 
Yes, we have new members for the uh, uh, new members uh, uh, were uh, uh, accepted for the Plone Foundation. So the Plone Foundation is the the legal entity behind uh, the Plone community. Uh, uh, the, the the Plone software distribution is owned by the foundation, uh, so that nobody can can just simply buy Plone from a company or take over a company or do whatever. So we have that, and, and Plone has been. Uh, been there uh, quite early already. 2006, the Plone Foundation was founded. And of course, for a foundation, you need members who can vote uh, on, on important decisions. Uh, so it's important that people who are active and have been have contributed to Plone and have a say there and uh, that those people are also in the foundation to represent the community in an official legal way. So we have two se uh, seven new members welcomed. Uh, I will mention them shortly. There's a nice overview on each of them on plone.org uh, with a small biography. Nice. Maro Amico, Talia Byers, Jan Buruk, Karel Kalitz. And now I think it's two Brazilians, so I try to pronounce their names correctly, but apologies in advance. André uh, Climacho Pereira Barbosa, uh, João Henrique uh, Gouveia, and finally, uh, a name I can better pronounce, but I know he doesn't speak much Dutch, but uh, Martin Peters from uh, Belgium. Nice. So, welcome. Yeah, welcome and to the foundation. You're only one voice, uh, one vote, uh, but that vote is very still important in a de democratic uh, foundations uh, system. Yeah, and the, we, the need foundation we need the foundation. We need the foundation. On a change of the bylaws, um, and the most important change was to change the um how do you say uh the duration of a term of in the board of directors to two years from one year to two years so that the board of directors will be voted only every two years uh starting after this plum conference where the foundation um membership meeting uh, annual membership meeting will take place Yes, but what I understood, it's also it's not necessarily that all members of the board switch. So what you could could also set up is a scheme where half of the board uh, changes every year, and then you have more continuity. Yes, I, I had the same uh, twenty years ago when I was uh, uh, the secretary of my study association, where we have every half year we had three new members instead of having one new board every year, and then everybody was like, we saw that at other study associations at the time. Uh, so I, 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 I applaud this, this change because I, I've had it myself. Okay, I was in my younger years, uh, uh, <laughs> so to speak. But then you saw at other study associations that six new people and they were yeah. all like, oh, we, we, have to, we have to manage a study association this year. And there was, always with us three, <laughs> there, there was always three people with us that were already in there said, look, we've learned it from the other guys or girls. We should do it like this and this way. Uh, uh, don't make a fuss. Good, good point, yeah. Okay, we have uh, some reports from events that already happened. Uh, first and foremost, this was the Beethoven Sprint that we both attended. That was in May in Bonn. Um, it was a very effective, very fun sprint. Uh, great food, nice people. Um, and we already mentioned that we made a lot of uh, decisions on what needs to go into Volto 17 and who's doing what. And actually work was not only uh, was done, there was a lot of discussion and decision making, but also programming <laughs> happened. Uh, the uh, and lots lot of programming, late on. night programming. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ub updating, the, updating, plone de. Uh, uh, finally, finally getting the CI/CD done at I think it was eleven thirty with some cold pizza and four other people watching a football game. Yeah, I was I was in the football game uh, team at that, that instance. Uh, the the image component was uh, discussed and uh, f not finalized, but was worked on there. Uh, the block type index so that you can query the catalog for which block is used where. So how which items are using the listing block or the search block, for example, which is super useful for upgrade steps, for not only for upgrade steps, for all kinds of other purposes. It, it's a very important for migrations. If you want to swap out one block for the other, you need to know if the block is still in use somewhere. And we 
didn't have this information. Uh, yeah. to, to, I know a bit more about this because I, I started. Yeah, so I started. The, I did the project management order. The uh, hey, people, we need this stuff, and there were some very nice people who picked this up uh, uh, very professionally at the sprint and got it working and helped. Uh, it was really cool to to see that to see. Okay, people have this idea. Uh, maybe we need this. People pick it up and uh, it's it's put on a ticket there. People pick it up and it, it gets worked on and it got got in there. What we are missing still is, I mean, the the, the whole the it, it, this block index is in Plone Volto package. It is there, but it's not. Uh, there's no UI yet. So it would be great if we could get a UI on top of it, so that the webmaster, like the rela it's like the relations control panel, uh, Philip. Mm -hmm. um, the relations were already there for many years, but we had no way to, to to to. There was no way for webmasters to to check and see the relations there. And when it was there, it was a huge help. So also for this, we still need the uh, relations. Not the relations. We need a, an index, a block index. Uh, control panel uh, there, and I think we could use some inspiration from the relations uh, control panel as well. Interesting. Um, then also, yeah, there was um, someone worked on updating uh, Plone DE to with Plone Six Volto. Not someone, the youngest uh, team member of Kit Concept. Uh, did yeah, a good job. It's not finished yet, but we still have some work to do there. Um, and we, I mean, so much stuff we did. So we, we realized so much stuff was happening du during that sprint that we decided to make an episode about that. Um, so what happens? You're not seeing this episode. The, because there is no episode, there is a bunch of interviews that we did with the laptop and the I iPad. Uh, and we haven't gotten around to editing or finalizing these videos yet. It's not that much work but it takes time and um this is why this episode is called the Pl Pl News Room episode 17 and not 16 if you were wondering before yeah. uh, because 16 is the sprint episode and it's going to be a bunch of small videos uh interviews with sprinters uh, where we ask them who they are and what they're working uh, on uh, during that sprint uh, i think that's going to be fun to watch I, it will definitely be fun to watch. But like you said, I, it's been on my plate uh, for most of it, but it's it's a lot of, I tried to, to connect them, but it's it's a lot of work. I, don't I hope for, I know, I know as, uh, at least one particular recording, I was interviewing someone and somebody started uh, mowing uh, the, the lawn uh, two blocks away there because we were sitting in the back garden and I was like, oh no, this is, and so we, we have some audio filtering to do there as well. So it, it will be a bit, a bit messy, but I think it will be a beautiful uh, picture of what happens at the sprint and and why people go there and what they all. Exactly. Uh, it's it's uh, much better than us talking do. about how cool a sprint is, uh, talking to the people, people yeah. who actually do the real work instead of us who are just sitting around. Yeah. So in the pipeline, watching football. In the pipeline, I hope we'll, we get, we should hopefully we get it fixed. Actually, we're, uh, we're not only watching football; we were playing football. We were, we went to the park to play soccer. It was. Oh, so that's where intense. you went. Okay, I only saw the couch uh, experience. It was, of course, I think it was something with Barcelona or maybe not. I, I, I'm not a football follower. So but it, the people were enthusiastic. Um, yeah, so that's that's the, the Beethoven sprint. I uh, uh, no, I tried to spread my sprints, but I couldn't miss this one. Uh, we had the midsummer sprint announced uh, uh this uh, this spring uh, in Finland, and I I've been uh, uh, I've been visiting uh, Sweden in my younger years, and I really love that country, and I had never been to Finland, so I really had no midsummer sprint. The last announcement, which I think sadly didn't go, didn't occur, but it was it was kind of planned in 2017 or 2018. Um, so Rikke Pekka, Oksana, uh, 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 our marketing team lead, uh, organized this sprint uh, and planned it for this year again. And I really had to say yes, and I was so happy I went there. It was beautiful. So I've been practicing this name, Juveskile, but I'm probably pronouncing this stress again wrong, but uh, I can type it now. It's, it's correct in our notes. Um, it was from June 26th to June 30th. It was uh, focused around enterprise subjects with Plone, because of course, Juveskile uh, University uses a lot of Plone in many different uh, ways. And the, uh, Riku Pekka had uh, some of his team, uh, his team colleagues from the digital services uh, uh, team in the university uh, there on the sprint. Uh, he was uh, able to, to get them for, for this week. And some external people came. I was there, uh, Jill Focada, Kodinox was there, uh, Jan Mevissen uh, was there. Uh, there were, uh, Two or three other uh, uh, employees, colleagues from other universities, that also were there for one or two days. But I'm, I will not dare to pronounce their names. 
I t- it took me three or four days to to finally to to keep them to keep the names to the person. I'm very good at faces, and I'm I'm totally bad with normal names. And Finnish names are are uh, are an, our next level challenge if you if you try to remember them. But it was very cool. We had, did a lot of nice things. We um, and a lot of, a lot came out of it. Asko was back. Uh, he had a he had a kind of. Uh, of sabbatical uh, for one year, and yeah, I've never seen Asko more enthusiastic. Uh, uh, and n- normally, if you see Asko already working on a sprint, he he does like three things at the same time, and he also completes them. And now he did like even even more. He's really back uh, back with a vengeance to to work on Plone again and and contribute and did things. So. One of the major subjects, and I think this is really big, but I have not got much time to look into it after the sprint, but I still want to promote it, is uh, integration of Plone uh, with uh, an open source workflow solution called Kamunda. You can do really nice, really Com- what are normally very complicated things there in, an, in a much easier way. I mean, it's, it's still complicated, it's workflow. Uh, so that's complicated. But what you can do is, for example, um, you can use Plone as a portal uh, uh, to 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 kind of have a small window into a workflow process. You define the workflow completely in in Kamunda. It can be, for example, a registration for an event, or uh, uh, it can be uh, it can be anything that has a number of multiple forms where you need to upload something. Some work has to be distributed to somebody else. Somebody else has to approve your. So that's that's a canonical example. You send in the form, and your manager needs to approve something before it is sent to the department uh, for fulfillment, for example, for procurement, buying something. This is something if you would build this in Plone with um, Easy Form or what we had uh, with Plone Form Gen, uh, you you have a kind of a, a problem there because the solutions we had so far is okay. You fill in the form, and it, the contents get stored. And then you're done. And you, you you can't really store an intermediate part and then continue again and continue again and continue again. Well, actually, you can because the same people at the Vescular University built something for that uh, for easy form uh, a few years ago, but they admitted themselves it gets too complicated and it gets too hairy too quickly. So then they found out about Kamunda and... Uh, Asko has been building Collective BPM Proxy, which is a small plone add-on that allows you to have a Kamunda process in there. And this, uh, the week at the, at, the, at, the, at the sprint, we almost all were interested in it. Also the outsiders uh, not working at, at the university. We installed it on our laptops. I got it finally installed on, on Friday. I kind of <laughs> waited for the others to fix it first and then helped me at the end to get it also on my laptop. Um, documentation was updated on Collective BPM Proxy. Uh, we we we, te- we all tested it. We gave in things. Jill worked on that. Jan worked on that as as well to 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 get the examples there uh, correctly running. And this is if if you are into larger organizations that have any kind of workflow, uh, the, the plug check this out. This is it would be really cool if more people see see how relatively easy it is to compare to other solutions to to uh, to, to have this this support in in plone so definitely maybe i should ha- that's another talk i think maybe i should just have a short, short talk again to present this at PloneConf. it's just too cool it's it's exciting uh, rick becker gave a talk uh, or at least he mentioned that uh, several times already uh, last time at the conference in belgium uh, I've never had a use case for Kamunda and I have never tinkered with it. And I know that DC workflow is is crazy powerful already. Uh, but the the Kamunda is something that uh, integrator basically can use to m- model his, his own application uh, workflow there. Yes. So that is... That is next level and very interesting. Yeah. If if that add add-on has uh, usable demos and it has uh, it has mo- now is, that is and they're tested now they're tested huge. since since June so excellent that's a yeah. huge plus that's a huge plus uh, and one of the silly examples uh, we got a demo uh, uh, by the uh, university people of the plat- the next version of the video platform they're working on. And, and of course, video is a lot of data, and you might not want to store all that data nowadays in Plone. So what they did is they had a have a Kamunda process uh, in front of that, that just shows you. You go to Plone. It's even in Volto. You go to 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 Plone Volto. You get an upload form, and you upload a video that you want to uh, send into the video platform. But that that form is actually a Kamunda process, and the the video is never going to Plone, but is directly 
uh, inserted into uh, 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 a large blob-based blob uh, external storage, that's the, like an S3 storage, that's secured. And then the Camunda process triggers all other kinds of things. It starts uh, 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 video conversion. It starts uh, 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 voice audio. It starts transcription because that's also an obligation. And it reports back into Plone, like, look, there's a new video there. It's on this and this location. Please update it in your index. So if you want to show it to people, blah, 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 and everything is arranged. So this is on an application there. It's, 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 it's of course, custom code, but this is the, the kind of things you can, you can do with Camunda. And that video platform looked really cool. It's a really nice internally built solution. Interesting. So, sounds like an effective sprint. Anything else worth mentioning? Yeah, so running yeah, I'm running out of time minutes. here because it's it, it's for me it's like like Beethoven Spirit was like we were always with 30 people yeah. here we were like with 10 people but still the, the subjects mentioned worked on there uh, something else playwright acceptance test so we've been using the Selenium library for a very long time to run the robot test and other tests in Plone. Uh, Asko, Jill, and I think also Jan and and two of the of Rico Becker's colleagues worked on uh, 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 Playwright acceptance test. It's Playwright, the new module that they want to integrate, and it has some very fancy things. Uh, uh, I don't know the details. They showed me like in Visual Studio Code, they could step through the acceptance test with a VS Code plugin. Yeah, I I, 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 I know Playwright, and it, I'm excited to switch to Playwright. And another thing is um, the university also uh, did some research already some years ago and they had an in somewhat internal module for SKIM. And I asked other people, they didn't hear about SKIM, although they did a lot with enterprise uh, authentication and LDAP setups and single sign-on. Uh, SKIM is a relatively new protocol for user provisioning. Uh, where you don't have a central database anymore that you query, which is like what you use with LDAP or Active Directory connections, but where you actually send around uh, uh, things from uh, uh, from one database to another. So you have one central database, and if a user gets added there, then Plone Skim is automatically sending the user to the uh, uh, local Plone system. And when something is changed in the Plone system, the Plone system provisions the changed attributes back to the central system. So you have you have duplication by data, but the skim protocol is keeping things synced. And the big advantage there is that you don't have a, a, a dependency on a huge central LDAP system uh, where we've seen in, uh, in, in at least the last 10 years that for some setups, if you go over 10,000 users in a central directory system, then the querying uh, uh, and, and getting the data out of there in real time gets really problematic. So if you want to, you have a university portal and you want to add a group or you want to give some people permissions to a group, then in the current setup, you need to go over LDAP to the central directory system, do the queries there. And, and that central directory system with like 50 applications in the larger applications in a university or in a government agency, that, that central LDAP is, is bogged down to, uh, to nothing. So this new, this new kind of distributed way of, of provisioning users between systems and also cleaning them up, that's blown skim. I, I, I uh, word joke, I skimmed the subject. I checked what the, uh, what the people were doing there. Uh, they have uh, updated the, uh, uh, the add-on uh, with, and tested it also with some open source authentication providers like Authentic and uh, Keycloak. So if you're into this stuff, integrating Plone with large user directories, this is definitely something you should check out because it's the future. Um, one of the administrative guys there said like, LDAP is like 30 years old now. We're, we're building authentication on 30 year old protocols and there have been, there have been some extension and things, but the, the inefficiency is still in there. And there are really new cool ways uh, like, like SCIM, S-C-I-M for people. It's not with a K, but with a C. So check this out. Interesting. Sorry, and there was someone at the door. I yeah, I, I was like, Philip, where are you going? Don't leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and other subjects there. Um, um, we did a lot of stuff with also with a small team. Uh, uh, contributions in large, contributions in small. Uh, 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 sprints are just fun. We have okay. one other Does sprint. Skim is certain is something I'll, I certainly have to look into. That is that is really interesting. It's really interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There was one other sprint uh, organized at the same time as the uh, Midsummer Sprint. We tried to cooperate a bit or have a, s a shared stand-up or wrap-up, but it was in Brazil. So we were dealing with seven hours of time difference. And um, the mid so on the personal note, Midsummer really means that you have like three hours or four hours of a little bit of darkness every night. 
So, except from the the time difference, I was a zombie at the first two three days in Finland. That really that really messes up with your mind. I had never expected uh, that to be there. But at the same time, we had a lovely and really well attended sprint uh, uh, in Brazil, organized by our uh, plone president, which we'll we'll just call Erico while he still is president. Um, he organized it together with other people and there were a lot of attendees. Uh, Plone is very well, uh, a lot used in uh, different institutions in Brazil. Uh, yeah. And they mainly worked, the, their main goal was uh, Plone distributions, to have a, a distributions uh, built specifically for the Brazilian market. They worked on translations. Um, and also for uh, the Cerrado Sprint, which is what it was called, uh, there's a sprint out report on Plone.org. So check it out. Serato Sprint, Midsummer Sprint, Beethoven Sprint, and we've talked almost 20 minutes only about sprints. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, that, that's where the work happens for a large part, and also the motivation, I think, and the triggers mm -hmm. for continued development and support happen, happen at those sprints, even though we're still sitting at home uh, after that and typing our, our fingers off uh, to get mm -hmm. stuff done. So the, the main feature is not now, but it's in the same section because upcoming events is the next. So the next upcoming event is the Plone Tune-Up Day. It is on September 15th, which is tomorrow. So I get, un unless I'm doing an all-nighter uploading that on YouTube, nobody's going to hear about that uh, watching this video. Uh, but this is going to be a regular event that's going to be uh, happening all over uh, every month or every two months. Tell us about it. Yeah, so this is this is an, an, an old idea and an old uh, uh, actually. So this is modeled after the Plone tune-up days that were there like for between ten and fifteen years ago. I sorry, I didn't look it up for this. Uh, I, I know it was there. I was just I think I was just getting a bit more active in the Plone community. I, I might have even participated at one one uh, one time. But we used to have uh, tune-up days where people would would be online would say, look. Um, Let's let's work together on some plone stuff and let's pick one day in a month where we all do the same because otherwise you and your company will have some time left and you will do something on a Tuesday afternoon. I will do it Thursday morning and somebody else will, will do it uh, and have a lot to do and will hack, hack around uh, some things on a Saturday. But wouldn't it be fun to have that organized a bit more and try to do it at the same time? And then, of course, with the uh, current online uh, possibilities, have a video call and have a bit of more of a community group feeling. So that's that's where this I this uh, started. I think in the steering circle uh, two or three meetings ago, uh, people mentioned like, "But we used to have these tune-up days, so let's try this." And that's exactly what uh, has happened. We had one tune-up day in August, August fifteenth, which wasn't really announced, but was just like, "Okay, some some uh, experienced community people." trying to make to clear their agendas and be there uh, and and uh, seeing how that go that went. But the first of official tune-up day restart uh, is indeed uh, tomorrow. Um, I have to look up, I have to, to move some stuff around on Plone.org because there is an announcement on Plone.org, but it is if you scroll down uh, uh, quite a bit. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the call for people. Even may, we might be able to uh, to get the, the TPN out uh, this evening or tomorrow morning, but that will be too late. But we will have a recurring event Every third day of uh, third Friday of the month, uh, uh, we have a kind of open space online uh, where we say, "Look, this is tune-up day. If you want to help for one or two hours, if you want to say hi, if you have a problem uh, with your with your plone setup, and you ask, hey, is this is this does do do other people have this? Um, if you want to discuss features or upcoming uh, 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 or, or things that you say, hey, shouldn't we fix this in plone? Can I discuss this with some people? We can create an issue for that." To have a common space online again and some community feeling every month. I think that's the that's the main goal uh, of the <coughs> Plone Tune-Up, and it's very well, nicely worded, also in a news article on Plone.org. Great. I, I look mostly forward to it um, as a reason to see people again. Well, okay, next m month I'm going to see them in uh, at the conference, but uh, if, if I work in a remote company, so my colleagues are not with me in my office, so I'm working by myself mostly. So it's really nice to chat with people and say, oh, this issue could we work, look at that together or uh, that. So it's it's also a social event for me at least. It's the excuse to go there, and it's it's a nice. Um, it's a very low entry barrier for beginners to uh, get help uh, fixing some stuff that annoys them in Plone itself. 
So yes, uh, because we'll, that's... We'll report about that uh, next episode. Yes, I'll try to also be there uh, tomorrow with some time available. I'll work on some subjects uh, uh, that are m mainly for myself, for AI team stuff or things I didn't get to uh, and really need to get done. But yeah, I forgot that part. It's also really something for not only uh, uh, like... <laughs> The, the graying people like you and well me on top you more here the graying older people getting together uh, at, a, at a social event but it's also for people that haven't been that active in the community but would like to have uh, have some guidance or want to see what's there or maybe have some time available to come around and get some assistance because nothing is more horrible than trying to install something or trying to fix something and then getting stuck after after 40 minutes or one hour or two hours when just one question and somebody saying to you look in that file or look at that option would have solved your problem and you would have been able to to continue uh, on on whatever you were doing or do other great stuff and not get stuck there yeah. final thing it this is also hooking into a bit to the and it's how many years ago but it started with this 10 percent uh, time uh, uh, so when you are working in a, in a software company you're dependent on open source products you're using them uh, there was this uh, there used to be this pledge uh, 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 which was a hot thing for a while i haven't seen it that much uh, in the last in recent years where company owners would also say look our employees are 10 percent free to assist and help in open source products or tools or libraries or whatever that we use for our normal work because we yeah. need to keep those healthy. And TuneUp Days is another also hook to that like, hey, if you are a Plone company, if you use Plone, be that's, aware. That's your chance to give back. In this is another giving, chance to give back. Giving developers the time to actually work on Plone itself and not on client projects where you earn money from. Like you and I said, we're totally overworked. Uh, we're not overworked, but we we had a lot of work. Uh, uh, where where also for us it was difficult in the in the last months to uh, to to contribute back. And when you have this this Friday afternoon or Friday morning, we we do it all. The plan is to have it all uh, around uh, the globe and not take too much. Uh, uh, not take time zones in account too much. We'll try to do it roaming around uh, where where the sun shines or where you are uh, up up and up and running and uh, exactly and having that. So yeah, let's let's do that. Plone tune up days. Okay, uh, now the big feature, obviously, Plone conference. It's After our... fifty five minutes, yeah, I, I'm almost feeling horrible. like a sales guy, horror yeah, <laughs> stretching good. out the. <laughs> Okay, well, let's try to do this quick because we have another uh, topic afterwards. So we're going to uh, talk about a couple of add-ons, not too long. Uh, so PlonConf is happening in like like day after tomorrow, which is not true, but uh, October 2nd. It feels like 8th. that. Yes, it's coming up really fast. Uh, the location is in Basque Country. It's a bit um, retracted. Um, re it's not on the coast. From the coast, not directly yeah. on the coast, but it's very close there. It's only a 20, 20 minute ride from uh, Bilbao. It's um, east of the Bilbao. Yeah, it's yeah, between it's Bilbao and San Sebastian. San Sebastian exactly. is the most well known town close to the, the French border on the, uh, on the east, and Bilbao exactly. is on the left. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I was trying to get there by plane, actually, but travel is. <laughs> complicated and it would have taken 14 hours which is not that bad but it would have added another hotel a night in a hotel somewhere on the road so that's annoying so i actually am flying i have a bad conscience about that but uh, who cares um for now at least so uh this is the plum conference there's going to be two days of trainings monday and tuesday then three days of talks uh wednesday through friday and again two days of uh, sprints on uh, saturday and sunday uh it's all happening in ibar itself uh nice locations uh very excited to see the main conference location the photos look really really awesome uh, looking forward to the town as well. Sounds really nice. And why are we um, going to I so why are we going to Ibar, Philip? I have no idea. Why? Are no we idea. There? Come on. Yeah, maybe someone was on vacation there sometime and decided yeah. to go. Yeah. No, there. there's a very cool no. company called Code Syntax working from Ibar and yeah. doing a lot of nice Plone uh, implementations. And like many other uh, Plone comps, uh, there's a company or a group of people that or an organization uh, that is able then to 
and offers to host uh, the next uh, plan conference uh, that's planned like almost two years in advance i think uh, um, uh, and the, the plan board helps uh, plan teams help and then seasoned uh, previous or plan conf organizers also help in a team and this year code syntax uh, picked up the or actually what I just said, so a goat syntax probably picked up the, the, the glove uh, one to two years ago. Um, and that's why we are now uh, visiting another beautiful location somewhere in the world. And we've had so many locations like that because just because there was a group of people there working with Plown that they said, OK, people come in. Yeah, well, thanks, uh, Mikkel. Uh, I can't pronounce that, his last name, Laraitegi. Mikkel? Uh, and his his colleagues from Code Syntax for organizing the conference there. That's that's great. It's an excuse for me to go there, uh, and I shouldn't need an excuse, but I'm I'm taking it. Uh, so far, nothing is known about talks and keynotes because the call for papers is still open. So if you're hearing this, uh, please submit a talk, um, case study. Um, whatever uh anything interesting plone volto uh or classic uh zop python um related is really um we're looking forward to to more uh, or they are looking forward to more submissions for talks um there's going to be uh, what we know is the trainings uh no huge news there there's one new training um which is uh the unofficial title is volto for dummies so it's a training for uh people who don't really know that much about react or javascript but still want to tinker with uh volto and not as a user uh, but actually customizing stuff um i'm giving that together with uh, nilesh and claudia uh, who's helping remote um then there are a couple of updated trainings. I'm really excited that Tiberio and Victor are updating the effective Volto training ah, cool. that they gave last year. That was a year. very popular and well-visited yes. uh, one the last year. The documentation is awesome, and they're working on... Uh, I looked at the branch, and uh, they're working on updating all of that, so that's an invaluable resource. Uh, Mastering Plone has been updated. It's given by uh, Katja Seuss. Uh, I'm really excited about that as well. And I'm also very excited to not to have to give Mastering Plone for the very first time. Uh, then there is going to be an updated version for of installing Plone uh, by Jens and Enrico. And I'm going to give an uh, updated version of migrating to Plone 6. Uh, again, short one, half day training only. And there's going to be an updated version for of tr the training uh, Volto and React uh, basics. So that is the one if you really want to know React and JavaScript. Whereas the uh, Volto for dummies is these people who say, JavaScript, no, 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 uh, React, I, I don't know what that is. I'm just going to copy and paste the stuff. And from copying and pasting, I'm going to understand what's actually happening. That's the way I learned Plone, by the way. So that's, uh, that's close to my heart, that approach. It's weird, but uh, I like it. So what are you going to do for the conference? Are you going to give a keynote, talks, sing and dance, give trainings? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we, we could do a TPN uh, episode again, but maybe we did that last year. Did I? Yeah, no, we did that's that. not spoiling. We, we should, we should we, maybe we should get to that. As well. <clears throat> No, nah, we should. No, uh, we we no. Nah, that's spo that's spoiling. Maybe we'll do something. No, that that's old. That's old. Yeah. yeah. If we come up something with something completely new that's related, we can hook into the podcast. It might it might be fun. But yeah, I'm not going to do it. So what I I was I was thinking like I, like I said to you I was thinking about giving talks. Uh, I've been mean lazy myself and not very helpful to the conference organizers by by holding my cards to myself like how much can i still do in september and prepare stuff so i send in one talk where i want to uh, 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 just give an overview of what the ai team uh, has been doing uh, uh, the last one one and a half years uh, uh, to manage the plone org website to manage also the plone conf website where we help the organizers this year uh, where we have some new uh, ci cd stuff uh, 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 using uh, github actions I mean, if if you know if you're into GitHub Actions, then it might be very cool. Then then there's no surprise for you. But I think it would be nice to give an overview of what one of the teams in the Plone community is doing on a technical level. Um, and I also want to use that talk to 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 show people what's there. And also uh, I have some some things on my on my wish list there as a AI team member and team lead, uh, where we really could use some help from people. So it was kind of a showcase. And I'm still thinking about other 
topics like maybe indeed have a have a have a showcase of the uh, of the project i described to you about the 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 hr framework organization that might be a small nice uh, classic ui team case and um, yeah and then i'm thinking maybe one other talk which i'm not going to say anything about now <laughs> because otherwise i'm also hooked for that one because Mikael is watching <laughs> Yeah, like, very don't, likely. Don't so I'll I'll, yourself. I'll put this the, the story back at you. You of course you're doing this uh, the, the the trainings uh, uh, you're you're heavily involved in. Uh, yeah, the, the the migration and the uh, Volto for Dummies training. Um, other than that, I'm trying to not give a talk uh, because I've been giving talks uh, too many talks. Uh, some of them good, some of them maybe not that good. And yeah. the, the not that good ones were when I, uh, I really want to give that talk, but I don't have enough time. So I didn't put enough time. So, And I realized I actually don't have enough time to prepare something which is worthwhile. So probably, yeah. Mikkel, sorry, there's not going to be a submission from yeah. me at least. Uh, let's see. I must say that the, you have this saying, perfect is the evil of good. And I, I had this with my talk last year, uh, where I tried to have a more marketing and business side uh, uh, presentation uh, about getting your return on, on investment and things I saw. And this was also a horrible talk to prepare because I did, it had been running in my mind for like two or three years, but I never was able to put it on paper. And to make a confession, I finished that talk like the night before. I was like I was so, so talks, like yeah. so many talks, you're stuck with normal. with five, six, seven, eight different subjects. You need to cram it into 30, 40 minutes. You need to at least you want to have this red thread of of at least some logical steps that you don't go to five, seven, and I I couldn't. And oh, the last night it was like now you have to, and then I had and it for me it was still it was certainly not perfect i also think it was not good but i was still very happy to 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 put myself to 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 the effort to to finish it and try to at least put something out there because it did start discussions i had really nice discussions on the talk with some people so it doesn't have to be perfect but sometimes you it, need to have to not. get it out it does not but my uh, my experience in the last uh, <laughs> couple of years was that i had the feeling that when I, when I gave a talk, um, everybody sees that, oh, he, he just added this slide at the last minute and he has actually no clue what he's talking about. Like very much imposter syndrome. Imposter, I was just going to say, Im imposter syndrome. It looks so effortless, uh, where I, where else, um, whereas I know that they put a lot of time into their talks, preparing and actually rehearsing them and researching them and looking for the right wording and the right uh, s slides and stuff. So it, it is actually a lot of time to, uh, it, it, once it's done, it looks effortless, but I'm sure these people, uh, I envy them when they make it look effortless yeah. and it's just awesome. It's, so it's that, a bit I, like... I, I, that's what I'm loving about PlonConf. Like, I love I, everything about it, but great talks are just awesome. Yeah, and they're essential to to have to have uh, discussions and to have things afterwards to to talk and think about and tinker about and make other people aware of the problems or the possible future uh, future directions or things you'd really like to add to plan. Yeah. But it, like you say, like you described, it, I have to think about my role playing uh, days. This is really chaotic, chaotic, good <laughs> character type. <laughs> we. <laughs> You've got structured people, and you've got. Uh, I mean, we're, we're, it's not that we do it on purpose, but yeah, we. It's it's otherwise impossible to. Uh, I must. I like this about this this podcast as well. I mean, we we do prepare this, of course. We have a script, we have subjects, but then we just roll with it, and uh, we hope people enjoy it, and uh, at least we get some uh, stuff out of our systems personally as well about what we're working on and what we're doing. That's true. So, so that's PlonConf. Looking plan forward plan to it. You. If, how, if you haven't. Uh, booked a ticket yet do that uh, there are still flights to Bilbao I check because I just booked mine um, and if you're still in doubt there. about and if you're still in doubt about a talk just do it yeah or yeah do it just try it <laughs> yes it's true okay we uh, finals final uh, last but not least uh, we're gonna talk about some add-ons yes uh, Fred you're gonna you have picked a couple of classic add-ons for us yeah that, so we were have you indeed. written all of them yourself no 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 so actually I didn't write 
any of these Maritz actually did. Uh, we're working on, a, on, a, on an internet kind of project uh, where we upgrade uh, a site. And uh, this one, uh, we decided to, to, stick, to uh, uh, stick to classic UI, but we were some stuff, uh, some things missing. So we, uh, for example, um, we wanted to have some portlets uh, on the, not on the regular places on the left and the right and nowadays at the bottom. And there is a very nice add-on called uh, products.contentwell portlets, but as soon as you install that uh, add-on, it gives you 15 extra portlet manager slots because it's a demonstration package to show where you can hook in all the slots. So then when you click on portlet manager, you get this huge list of portlet managers. <laughs> and it was like, okay, w there's two things we can do. Um, Either we are going to uh, have uh, our, our own portlet manager. We just copy the code from uh, uh, from products content well portlets and we add it into the policy package of the uh, uh, of the project, and then we'll have our and then it's done. Or very quickly, Maurits was like, hmm, I'm just going to add, uh, we need two uh, positions here. I'm just going to add two small uh, uh, add-ons here. And then we just add the add-on to, uh, uh, to the X listing of the project. And we're done because it's there. It's installed uh, through the policy and we can reuse it. So these are two small add-ons. Uh, and I have to look up the names to have them uh, correct. Because it's a collective above content tile portlet and collective below content portlet. Those are two small add-ons. So if you if you have a desire to have some portlets on top of uh, the the page before the title or uh, at the content, just install this one small add-on and then it works. We're going to add the links to the uh, show notes. We'll add the links to our our uh, uh, to our, our small home at plon.org uh, newsroom later. Yeah. Um, another one of this uh, variation was that we used uh, uh, the collective portlet discussion. Uh, to have some discussion information. Uh, uh, you can, for example, for a part of the site, you can show recent discussions there. And there's one other thing, feature in there. Uh, thank you, Alec. I was almost going to say uh, thingy after your presentation in Namur last year, <laughs> where he mentioned thingy 50 times, and now I can't get it out of my head. You're welcome for listening to this podcast and now being infected as well. But there wasn't a tile. So we had the portlet, but we had, didn't have the tile yet. So that was another one which was like quick and I wouldn't say quick, not say quick and dirty, but quick and, and more straight to the point where we converted the portlet, uh, portlet to a, a, a tile, which is a collective tiles discussion. Then heads off to another uh, small uh, uh, tile there, which was created already some time ago by Red Turtle for one of their larger uh, government customers uh, called Collective Tiles Collection. And that it's basic. It, it's just like the uh, the hmm, content listing block we have in Volto, and like the content listing tile we already have in uh, in in uh, collective mo in mosaic by default. But there, you always have to build the the search criteria are stored in the tile or in the block. And what we have with the port at the other ones that we, we define a collection somewhere in Plone and you can just link to the collection. And that's exactly what the Collective Tiles collection does. We already had like 10 uh, very precisely and nicely configured collections in that site that show recent change this, uh, uh, new items over there, specialized content type with some restrictions there that just list this information. And you don't want to repeat configuring the, all the search criteria just for this uh, uh, block or tile. So Collective Tiles collection is just a, a reference block to a collection the way also the collection portlet used to work. So again, nothing, nothing big deal. Uh, but we, uh, I uh, looked at the Red Turtle one, and we did a few small updates it needed for Plone Six compatibility. Uh, so there will be a Plone Six uh, compatible release uh, from it as well. Nice. And the last one, last but not least, um, Mosaic is a really cool package. But by default, it enables you to. Ena it, by default, if you install uh, Mosaic, it enables the uh, Mosaic behavior on a page. Uh, on a, sorry, on the document content type and on the folder content type. But if you want to restrict editing mosaic landing pages to uh, a certain group of users or whatever, then that's, this is a bit uh, difficult to fix. So we added a small add-on collective mosaic page, um, which looks a bit like the... Um, the, the, um, the, the new uh, uh, folderish page in Volto, because it's, it's a content, uh, it's a content item specifically for mosaic. You can't switch to other content types and you could just say add a mosaic landing page over here. 
It's also folderish, so you can store images and other things you use on the mosaic page inside the uh, the item itself. So it's a very thin wrapper with, of course, uh, 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 some some. We had some challenges there, and Maurits really had to do his best. And we we had already, I think, we had now two alpha versions of of it because it has some uh, uh, dependencies on having an add add view available. And when that's not available, we had some some edge cases. There's also a relatively small add-on, but it gives you just quality of of developer or integrator life when you need to have. Uh, um, the, the ability to add a mosaic page restricted to a group or users where you can just say, okay, you're not allowed to add this content type or you are, or you can't add this content type over here. And we have other uh, tools for that. So that's the, the, the list, of, the, the list of, of small but nice uh, uh, add-ons I have for you for, uh, for, uh, for Classic UI. I'm, I'm definitely gonna check out the mosaic page thing. Uh, what I usually do is I have a small action enable and disable mosaic. So there's no, the, 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 the layout, the mosaic layout is not uh, shown by default. I'm hiding that. So not every page is switched on. Uh, and only if you have a certain permission, this, uh, the action, uh, enable and disable mosaic is available for whatever content type I write in these five, four lines of code and it switches on uh, the, the layout mode uh, for Mosaic for this, uh, for this item and everything else is not touched. Mm. Uh, but um, I like your approach as well. So, so there's a little, for, for developers, there's a little, little tricky thing here that Maurits figured out. Um, because if you install Mosaic, then it enables the uh, layout view on document and on folder. You want to disable that. So yeah. if you disable that, uh, so a collective Mosaic page disables the default Mosaic behavior, but Mosaic then you have the yeah. chicken and egg problem, which add-on was last updated or installed. So what Mouse did is there's an event listener on the profile install of Plone App Mosaic. So as soon as Mosaic gets updated again after the collective Mosaic page install, the event is triggered and collective Mosaic page does its patching again on maybe something that Mosaic has overridden. A really cool developer focused thingy if you if you want to if you if you have a kind of that. It's really nifty. Yeah. Annoying to have to do that. Okay, uh, let's move over to Volto for a second. Uh, yes, you I prepared our Volto dessert for today. Yeah, exactly. The dessert is drop-down menus because uh, if you ever used Volto, uh, one thing uh, is different. Not a lot of things are different. But one thing that uh, people very quickly realize that is missing is the drop-down menu that is available in Classic is not part of Volto itself. And there are three add-ons uh, that I want to mention that actually um, provide this functionality. And I'm going to quickly share my screen um, to show them for those who are watching the video. For the others, I'm going to just explain quickly what's happening. Just need to find the right screen uh, to share. Yeah, so uh, drop-down functionality yes. was added in Plone 5.1.5.2. Kudos to Peter Holzer, I think, who championed that for a large part, which was, I mean, drop-down yep. menus are, are, are uh, complex because you have to nowadays cater for responsive. Exactly. Um, but Volto by, de by default so far didn't have a native uh, or built-in uh, uh, drop-down so uh, solution. So like a lot of other things that are developed, uh, uh, those are now in some uh, uh, community add-ons. Yeah, so here is the navigation of the demo site. Someone was busy, I guess, uh, but there is no drop down menu here. Um, so, number one is uh, Volto menu customization from Code Syntax. Uh, the Aha. repository is uh, on GitHub, Code Syntax, Volto menu customization. All of all three are found on the awesome Volto add-on listing. So if you go on Plone.org, at the bottom there's extensions or add-ons, I think it's called. There's a link to the awesome Plone and awesome Volto add-on lists. You can find all three uh, add-on uh, drop-down menus there. Um, it's last updated nine months ago, so I'm not sure how... Uh, busy development is, but there is a, sh a short video uh, that is running and it just shows there is a page. I'm going to trigger that uh, and it just shows drop down menus on click. Uh, so you see there, it's not on Hoover, it's on Click from from what I gather in the, in the video. Uh, yeah. I haven't installed that, I haven't tried that. I tried the other two, uh, I'm going to show these. So this is uh, basically, uh, yeah, 
it seems very simple and it does what it's supposed to do. Um, word of warning, try it out yourself and figure out which of the three is the best. Uh, yeah, so your, it, might, it might work out of the box, for example, with uh, Photo 16, but for Photo 17, the alphas, you, it, it might need some more level work. Or maybe look at, the, is there a branch already? So what often happens is that there's a branch then uh, with some other with someone else uh, contributing the, the new support. There are four branches, but uh, only the developed branch is a bit no, more not in this case. up to date. So uh, yeah, well, it's code syntax. So maybe they're gonna give a lightning talk about that at the PlumConf that they're organizing. So the next one is by uh, Ken Mannheimer uh, called Volto Navigation Dash uh, Volto Dash Navigation Dash Dropdown. Uh, there is actually an interesting discussion on community plone, community plone org about that. Where he uh, where is that here? He yeah, I remember he that. Laid when out he, a couple yeah. of his uh, problems and uh, the solution that he's found. It's uh, interesting to read if if you're into that. I'm just gonna show you the um, the demo how it uh, looks like at the moment. If I'm able to copy that link, uh, how do I do that? Link copy link. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, so here it's a, it's his his site, uh, and you see there is a folder and has a couple of or folderish pages. Uh, content and it goes way down and oh um, wow That's... maybe it needs uh, I, I would probably add a couple of lines of CSS uh, to 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 make it uh, work better with the long titles and stuff uh, but it seems to be working really nicely and um, so that's that's a great option uh, to look at too so that is um, where's the name again I Volto ah, navigation Volto navigation drop down. Volto dash navigation dash drop down. Yes. Thank you for putting and it in our notes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I can and read the it third for you. one is uh, I think it's the the ones uh, the one that's been around uh, the longest. It's called Volto drop down menu. Volto dash drop down menu. It uh, lives in the collective in the, the repository, and it comes with a uh, companion add-on for Classic. So you need to install something in Classic and an add-on for Volto. Uh, the reason for that is that it not only shows uh, what's uh, visible, uh, th the content that you have, you can tell it to do that, but it, it is you configure the main navigation items manually. It's, it's detached. It's detached from the content tree. Exactly. It's detached from the content tree and you can uh, add an item that is somewhere in the tree as a navigation item. And from then you can say uh, there, you can say, uh, just show what's in there or um, you write your own navigation items in there. So it's a, it's an interesting mix of, of uh, what we had in the old portal actions uh, where we uh, were able to add navigation items uh, manually, not in the sub navigation, but the main items and uh, dynamically created navigation. Um, I'm gonna ha I have an example. We actually use that in a project uh, here um, at some, with some uh, customizations and you click on it and you get a uh, these three items are the main navigation items here and uh, what is shown is actually the content of these items so these three are uh, configured manually and the content is uh, pulled uh, in dynamically so this is how uh, this plus some css for uh, styling and stuff like that and um, if you don't want to use any of these add-ons, you can write your own uh, navigation. Uh, I know Kit Concept did. I'm pretty sure Kit Concept did that uh, for DLR, for example. So this yep. is a drop-down navigation which uses neither of the three, but just uh, I guess the navigation endpoint or the sitemap endpoint. I guess the navigation endpoint and pulls in like that, and just you write it yourself. Uh, that's also possible. So that is option number four. Uh, we're going to add the links to the three uh, navigation drop-down um, add-ons to the show notes, and you can uh, pick and choose for yourself. I'm still sharing. 
um, I, 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 I forgot about that uh, at the PlonConf, uh, so I'm going to just <laughs> cram that in now. Uh, one of the most interesting things about Plon Conference is our social activities. And I'm a total sucker for oceans. Uh, so I'm certainly going to go uh, take take a boat trip uh, along the coast uh, between Zumaya and Deba. Um, I guess that is close to Ibar somewhere. Uh, that is very, very appealing to me. I'm going to... Who, whoever is giving talks... Uh, yeah, here, or I guess that's during the sprint uh, time. Yeah, seven is seventh is Saturday, so maybe I'm gonna skip a uh, couple of sprint hours and uh, take a boat trip. That is, I I, I have to do that. So okay. uh, one so one more thing about the uh, the drop down menu. So um, I know um, Rocket Concept will present uh, a, a new uh, theme for Volto called Volto Light Team uh, with uh, one or two talks at the conference. And what they basically did was all the, the lessons learned. I mean, Git Concept is one of the main drivers uh, next to, of course, other uh, companies like Red Turtle, Odeweb, uh, 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 Katja's company, and many others. So you have started now also, but this has been going on for years. Git Concept has been doing a lot of photo projects and their lessons learned from the last two years. Uh, they try to, to come up with and look at all the theming and the things they've done in those projects and try to put that into a basic theme they can use for for new projects and also experiment with some some new uh, new features in there um, so that's photo light team and i know there have been discussions about enabling a basic drop down menu uh, system in the photo light team as well because it's it's heavily uh, like you said it's, it's heavily hooked into the uh, into the theming and you can very easily go to the uh, uh, sections or the, the header component there and build your own component there that's maybe does even other fancier things but still, many people don't have that development capacity or the time or, as you saw uh, with uh, uh, Kevin Mannheimer, do you pronounce his name correctly? Uh, so his, his challenge also, like you see, it takes so much time to finish the last 2% of a layout system there where you need to, to wrap around CSS. So um, I, I know my, my colleagues at Kit Concept are also uh, evaluating and looking if they can have a basic, uh, good enough version uh, in Photo Light Team as well. I, I would very much uh, be in favor of that. Um, I'm, I've been uh, rooting for the Volto Light theme since the last conference. I think we had a discussion about adding that as an add on to Volto 17, which will probably not happen. But uh, having that as an installable add on is that's. Wow, I'm I'm very very happy that this, if this will finally happen. I've also been testing be photo. I've been looking in the repository from yeah. time to time. Yeah. Uh, we we're working on that together on a project uh, for for BFS uh, with that theme. So yeah, yeah. So go, one of go the go team. Hmm? Go team. Go theme. Theme go team. team. Go theme team. Whatever. Theme team. Go whatever. Down, <laughs> team. Yeah. So, Philip, this was to be expected that we would... No, we're not at the one and a half hours yet, but after four months of uh, of, of not venting our, our our experiences in, in Plone community or in Plone land, we had some catching up to do. Um, a lot has happened, even though we were uh, very busy. As you can see, we had sprints. Uh, uh, we had a lot of contributions, a lot of work on the next Plone versions. Um, Maritz... Uh, I contacted him, he said, well, I'm going to do 607, uh, 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 probably the release candidate today. He also intends and has discussed it with other people who have to submit and also patches and to, to with the, of course, the release team is there involved, the roadmap team is involved. He he looks as if, he can, if we can get an alpha uh, before the conference. Um, I'm looking at you because I know we've had some experience with releasing final versions of Plone one week before a conference that didn't turn out that well for trainings. Like yeah, half of the that's, that's annoying. <laughs> half of the people installing Plone and then f finding out it's broken or suddenly the new version got pulled in or something else. So hopefully we'll get an alpha uh, 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 before the conference because of course that gets the talk going. People can install the alpha much easier and better test it and we can have discussions on, on uh, at the conf about the, uh, the 6.1 release. Um, but that's not, we don't know exactly when and I don't think it, just from a personal thing, I don't think it would be smart to, to drop a 6.1 uh, uh, right now. I mean, there's still too much work to do. 
Um, but it would be cool if we get the get the discussion running. So uh, check out, uh, uh, keep keep an eye on communityplan.org uh, uh, for the next weeks because there might be an announcement from Maurits when the uh, when the first six one alpha in many alphas uh, uh, probably uh, will be will be released. So the, the next episode is going to be after the Plone conference. Uh, obviously, we're going to discuss that. Um, between that or before that, hopefully, we're going to release the uh, the short interviews we did at the uh, sprint in the Beethoven sprint in in Bonn, and see you all in Ibar or wherever at the Plone Tune Up. Um, see you tomorrow at the Plone Tune Up if you get thanks it. Thanks for your time and listening and. Thanks, Fred, for being here and uh, shooting the plone stuff again. Thanks, Philip. Bye. See you next time and see you in Ibar. Yay. Bye. Bye-bye.